Okay, welcome to step two in the how to play two finger thumb lead style banjo in seven essential steps. Crash course for the absolute beginner. Again, this video is going to be covering the second step. And if you haven't seen step one, I would strongly recommend watching that one first and learning the exercise taught there, as well as the intro and getting started videos. So in this particular video, what we're going to be doing is continuing to learn another section of our demonstration song, Pretty Polly, and a new technique to go along with it. And just like we did last time, when we learn our new section of the melody, we are going to be doing so by ear. Also remember that central headquarters for this uh, course is fingerstylebanjo.com forward slash two finger, and that's two finger spelled out uh, on that uh, site you will find all of the videos as well as transcripts for the videos and a link to sign up to uh, have the ebook that accompanies these series of videos delivered to you when it's ready. So previously I mentioned that uh, one of the more unique things about the banjo is it has a lot of extra notes being played in addition to the melody. I sometimes refer to those as decorations. So probably more decorations than you would hear in, in most other instruments. So that gives the impression that the banjo is an instrument that's played fast. So that's one of the myths out there about the banjo is that it's, a, that you, that it's an instrument for fast music, which is not true. The, the music that's played on the banjo is not any faster than any other music, but having more notes going on or more, more notes being played per unit time gives the impression uh, to the listener that it's being played fast. And one of those kinds of decorations are drone notes. So a drone is a note that's sounded in the background in a piece of music, so a, a note of a particular pitch that's always of the same pitch that's sounded continuously or, or relatively continuously throughout a piece of music. And it is a uh, feature of traditional music all over the world, but drones are not as commonly heard in modern music, and that's probably why uh, people associate the banjo with an older sound than maybe some other instrument. And of course, the main drone on the banjo is the fifth string, so you have this open fifth string, which is also sometimes referred to as a drone string, that's constantly sounding the same note in the background throughout a piece of music, whereas the pitches of the other strings are changing uh, in, on the banjo, the uh, fifth string is always the same pitch. Now the cool thing about two finger thumb lead banjo is that you actually have two drones. You have the fifth string drone, but you also have the first string drone. So your melody notes are almost exclusively going to be played on the second, third, and fourth strings with the thumb. And then your drone notes are not just the fifth string, but the first string. And I think that's part of why Two, uh, two finger thumb lead has a really old timey sound is because you have that extra uh, drone note. And today we're going to be learning the fifth string drone and in a later uh, episode we'll be learning playing the first string drone. And just as a reminder, make sure your banjo is in G modal tuning. That's the tuning we're using to play the song Pretty Polly. So that is a D on the fourth string, a G on the third, a C on the second, a D on the first, and a G on the fifth. And so one thing you're going to notice as we are adding in this fifth string into our arrangement is that there are going to be instances where you have to make a decision about whether or not to keep a melody note or to drop a melody note in favor of a decoration like the fifth string. So we'll be coming up against that in this uh, episode as we work through Pity Polly. And anytime you are arranging a song for the banjo, there are countless decisions to make like this, where you're deciding what technique to use, whether to play a melody note, whether to add a drone instead, and so forth. So much so that you could conceivably spend your entire life playing different uh, versions of uh, Pretty Polly uh, continuously and never duplicate them and have many more to play and still be playing with them the rules of two finger thumb lead style. And I say that because some people get uh, the idea, hung up on the idea that there's a right way to play a song, uh, which is absurd when you consider that how many different possibilities there are out there. For even a relatively simple melody like Pretty Polity, there are countless numbers of ways that you could play that two finger thumb lead style and at, and at A, uh, be within the rules and sound like two finger thumb lead and be two finger thumb lead 
and sound great. So don't think there's ever any one way you have to play things. There may be a way a certain person played it one time in history or one day when it was recorded, but that's just a reflection of their own decision, set of decisions that they, made when, they made when playing the tune. So the truth is that yes, there's a set of rules that makes two finger thumb lead style, two finger thumb lead style, but within, that, uh, within those rules, there is a ton of room for creative expression. And the further you go along your journey in banjo playing, the more I would encourage you to explore uh, all that territory. It always starts with first identifying the melody, and then from there, adding on what sounds good to your ear. For those of you who have read the Laws of Banjo series, you know that the first law says to learn to play like the masters, we must learn to play like the masters. And the idea behind this series of initial videos is to show you the path it's taken in taking a tune, taking a melody, and fleshing it out in a particular style, which is what every master player does. Just like if you go to culinary school to learn to be a chef, you don't do so by memorizing a bunch of recipes. You, you do so by understanding the uh, elements of cooking, how they all are assembled together to make great food, and so that then you can do that for yourself and create your own recipes that are unique to you. And I think one of the reasons why a lot of people struggle with the banjo is because it's oftentimes taught as a set of recipes rather than the underlying structure that the very people whose music you're trying to emulate or that inspired you, the structure that they used. And so that's exactly why we're building this song from the ground up in this series. Okay, let's start by reviewing what we learned already, the first part of the melody for Pretty Polly, where we're only, where we were only playing the melody notes with our thumb on strings three and four. I'm gonna put up the tab for that. And if you're unfamiliar with tab, I will link in an article on how to read the tab in the video description. I'm also working on a, a short video that demonstrates how to read banjo tab, which should be up soon, and I will link it in this video when it's ready. So let's go over uh, what we played the last time, which sounds like this. Singing it, sounds like this. Polly, pretty Polly, come bowl along with me. And again, I'm singing it here so you can start to link up sounds that you hear singing with sounds on the banjo, which is really a crucial part of uh, playing by ear. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in some fifth string drones uh, in between these melody notes. So let's go through this measure by measure. First measure, what we have right now is this. But we're already having, we're gonna already have an instance here where we're gonna sacrifice a melody note in the name of a drone. So the last note here, we're gonna drop and play a drone instead on the fifth string. So now this measure is gonna sound like this. So again, we're just alternating between the open third and the fifth and the fifth string. Okay, our next measure right now sounds like this. One more time. So again, all of the down and up beats in this measure are occupied by melody notes. And if you're not familiar with down and up beats, don't worry about it. We're going to cover that in a future episode. But the, the point being is that as is right now, there's not any room in the structure of how two finger thumb lead works. There's not any room for a fifth string drone. So we're gonna drop, uh, we're gonna drop one of those melody notes and play a, a fifth string drone at the end. So it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so again. Open third, third fret, third string, open fourth and fifth string. All right, next measure, once again, same is same issue. All the, all the uh, spaces are occupied. So we're gonna drop the second note and fill in a fifth string drone there. All right, now let's move on to our last measure. It's just the open third, so we have plenty of space here all of our spots where we could put in a fifth string drone are, are open. So what we'll do is we'll just alternate between the open third and the open fifth. So whenever you have space in a melody like this, where there's, where there's just a note and there's, and there's some empty space, uh, you call that uh, filler, filler notes or vamps. Um, 
so th where you have kind of a, a lot of freedom to do whatever you want um, in that section. So here's everything all together, all four measures now with our fifth string drones added. Okay, so I would suggest that you practice that for a little bit, get that pattern of picking under your fingers, and maybe try practicing along with the Beats for Banjo backup tracks, and then move on to the next section, and I'll be demonstrating playing all of it along with the backing tracks at the end. Okay, so let's go to the next part of our melody. Here's what we have so far. Polly, pretty Polly, come go along with me. Next section goes, Polly, pretty Polly, come go along with me. So you can kind of hear that the melodic contour of that is very similar to, what, to the first part. It's almost a mirror of it, except that it's sung a little bit higher. Um, and so you're going to see that we're going to be playing higher notes on the banjo, but it's a very uh, similar sound to the first. So here are, here's what that sounds like on the banjo. And with, uh, with the voice. Polly, Polly, come go along with me. All right, and so just like last time, I'm going to give you some choices to choose from in terms of where to find these notes. So again, the orange dots on the fretboard indicate where the possible uh, notes are to play in this second part. As you'll see, there are only three choices. So there are 10 notes in all that you're picking out, but you only have three possibilities in terms of what notes to play for each, for each of those. And so I'll demonstrate it one more time. All right, and now go ahead and pause the video, see if you can find those notes on your own in the banjo, and then unpause when you're ready and I'll give you the solution. All right, so here are the notes for that part. So we're gonna start with the second fret of the second string twice for the first measure there. Next measure, second fret, second string again, then open second, third fret, third string, then open second. Next measure, we have second fret, second string again, then open second, then third fret, third string. And then the last measure is just second fret, second string. So all together, we have Okay, so now let's add in some fifth string drones. So first measure, we have two spots for it, easy enough. We're just gonna throw those in between the melody notes like this. So again, I'm just alternating between the second string and the fifth string, and I'm fretting that second string at the second fret. And I'm fretting it with my index finger. Next measure, right now sounds like this. But we're gonna drop that last melody note in favor of a drone, so it'll sound like this. Okay, next measure right now sounds like this. We have an open spot there for a drone on the fifth, so we'll just play it there. Okay, and then our last measure was just this, just like before, where we had one note in the entire measure. So we'll just add in the fifth string at the spots there and alternate again between the second uh, string and the fifth string. All right, so everything together now sounds like this. Sing it one time. Polly, Polly, come go along with me. It's starting to sound really old timey, right? Really awesome. All right. Um, so now let me demonstrate playing all of it together with the Beats for Banjo backup tracks. All right. So now I'm going to demonstrate how to play that exercise along with the Beats for Banjo backup tracks. So I will start it at 70 beats per minute.
Okay, so that is the exercise to practice between now and next time. You can already see that kind of getting a real regular thumb, right, is kind of the key to the rhythm of two finger thumb lead style. And uh, remember that with these exercises, the goal is to play, be able to play along really with any tempo with good timing and clear notes. So the speed at which you can do it right now isn't really that important. Focus on timing and note clarity uh, and do that kind of at the slowest tempo where that works. Um, don't try to play it too fast right now. That's not the objective and that will only undermine things in the future. And remember that you can slow down the video further by using the gear icon at the bottom. Okay, so try to get that under your fingers before moving on to the next installment. And I will be releasing the next video in a few days. So I will see you then.